Okay, so we're looking at decimals and decimals are really quite simple once you get your head around it. If you don't really understand um, decimals, the first thing you should do is you should get yourself, and they're very easy to get because you can just draw them up yourself, um, a place value chart. Okay, so in this place value chart, if I put a decimal point right in the middle, okay, like this, and then I'm going to draw up different columns. Okay, and the first one here is tenths. Second one is hundredths. Next one, thousandths, and so on. Here, obviously, I have ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. Okay? It's also important to remember that tenths as a fraction is over ten. Okay? Hundreds as a fraction is over 100. Thousands is obviously over thousands and so on. Okay, so a place value chart can be really handy. If we have a look at question five, it says express each of the following proper fractions as decimals. So it gives us three tenths. All right, three tenths. Now tenths are here in this column. All I'd need to do is put my three in there and obviously a zero there and it gives me my answer. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. If I have a look at, say, G, 121 thousandths. Okay? Here I've got my thousandths, so we're looking at 121 of them. Okay? I would put in the last number, the last digit, okay, I put in that thousandths column. So one. Okay? Then the one next to it, I put there, and then the one next to it, I put there. So I'd have 0 0.121. If you have a situation like this, where you have six hundredths, okay, once again, the very last digit, in this case, is only one digit, okay, but it still needs to go in this column. So I put the six there. There's a zero there because there's nothing here and a zero there. So six hundredths would equal 0 0.06. Okay? Really important point. So if you don't really understand decimals, get yourself, just draw one of these up. Okay? They're very straightforward to draw up. Um, in question seven, sorry, in question six, it asks us to express each of the following mixed numbers as decimals. Okay, so let's just have a look at 6a. And 6a is 6 and 4 tenths. Okay, this stuff is really quite simple once you get to know it. So we have six whole numbers, so we obviously have a 6 and then our decimal place, our decimal point, sorry. And then we have 4 tenths. Well, tenths lie straight after the decimal point, so it's going to be 6.4. Okay, pretty simple. Um, let's move on to a problem solving question. So question 10 asks us this. The batting averages for five retired Australian cricket test captains are Adam Gilchrist, 47.6, Steve Waugh, 41.06, Mark Taylor, 43.49, Alan Border, 50.56, and Kim Hughes, 37.41. List the five players in descending order of batting averages. So, from the largest to the smallest. Okay, well, Steve Waugh is first. He had um, the highest average, 51. Then AB, Alan Border, had the next highest. Then Gilly had the next one. And then Mark Taylor, Tubby, great captain. And Kim Hughes had the last one. So we just list them like that. Okay? So that is in descending order. Largest to smallest. Okay? For B, Ricky Ponting's test batting average is 56.72. 
where does this rank him in terms of the retired Australian test captains listed above? Well, obviously, um, his is higher than all of the above. Okay, I'll finish with a pop question. Does any Australian test captain have a higher average than Ricky Ponting? All right, you should know this. <laughs> I won't tell you the answer. Ask somebody else. All right, hopefully that helps.